we had one 167. It was an event that we were looking forward to. I still had to go back and watch a lot of the event. Genevieve says, lame. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, look, man, Taiwan Chai, this is somebody oh that, like, since I've started watching one, since you put me on one, he's must watch for me, right? Yeah. But we also so had, good. was Smoking Joe? Smoking Joe Nadawit, the one of the match? great. One of the great nicknames as well, dude. It really is, dude. Look, talk, talk to me about the fight, dude. Yeah, so, <clears throat> look, this was... Uh, Butterbrose says it's almost as bad as you uh, learning you missed it for F1. <laughs> oh, I'm um, watching F1 after this, by the way. Yeah. Shout out to the team that put together that F1 Netflix series, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Tawan Shai versus Smoke and Joe is the rematch. Some people had Smoke and Joe winning the first match. I thought Tawan Shai won the first match, but it was close. It was fun. And it was kind of like a... Um, it was the first time in a while that somebody could really like stand and trade with Tawan Chai and make it through and actually have a, a competitive fight with Tawan Chai. Cause for a while, Tawan Chai was just breaking people's limbs, you know, the leg kick mm-hmm. knockout, the, he broke, uh, was it, uh, who was it? Kyria where he broke his, uh, David, where he broke his forearm with the, the body kick that he blocked. And you're just Nasty. like, who can even fight this guy? And then smoking Joe said, I'll do it. He just <laughs> hops off the mountain. He's snowboarding all the time. He hops off the mountain, jumps in there, fights him extremely well. Um, and then I think in between, Tawan Chai fought Superbone, and it was an amazing fight. And then, uh, and then, I think Smoke and Joe fought Luke Lassie. I think in between, uh, which was also a very quick. fun fight. Luke Lassie, um, yeah, yeah, that was a fun fight. So it was cool, cool to have this matchup. Uh, this was originally supposed to be the co-main, obviously, right? Um, Stamp versus uh, Denise was supposed to be the main event. Stamp has to pull out. Rest in peace. Um, she's in good spirits recovering uh but this fight it's the rematch we're now we're here we're, we made it uh yeah and hey the, and we're dude, back to fight. an arena here oh yeah awesome i love awesome. lumpini the entrances but you can't beat this i don't think it gets better than this i'll be honest i think that part of it too though is uh that there's so many fights in lumpini that you kind of just after a while you're like okay it's just lumpini again right mm-hmm. uh to your point nothing gets lumpini but yes, yeah it's great uh, the atmosphere, the crowd, electric, dude, the entire time. Yeah, and They brought the cage back. They got the circle back. You love it. I love it. I know Blunderbug Absolutely. likes the ropes. What did you think? I, I thought uh, first two rounds, first two figuring rounds, out process. Taiwan Chai. Yeah, for figuring me, out process. It, it, uh, up until the end of the second round, mm-hmm. for me, is when I think I started seeing Smoke and Joe start figuring this out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and he was closing the distance a lot more, mm-hmm. and he started letting his hands go, man. The hands you are know nice, me. dude. Punches and bunches, my yeah. favorite, right? <laughs> my favorite. And Smoke and Joe was throwing them in bunches, dude. But then when he started mixing in the leg kick at the oh. end of his combinations as well, because, uh, dude, look, when they started getting in close, right? And I, I know that I went on the chat afterwards. I was like, dude, banger alert, because yeah. <laughs> it really turned into uh, uh, such a good fight, man. Because Smoking Joe was getting inside, throwing his combos. Taiwan Chai didn't want to just not respond, so he throws some combos yeah. as well. But then the when Smoking Joe, finding. yes. But then when Smoking Joe throwing the kick at the end, for me, the last thing on my mind was like, he ended the flirt with the kick. He was the last one to land. Yeah, and, and I don't know if it was the high the judges, but I was like, dude, that was so smart of uh, Smoking Joe to just start incorporating that, right? Not that. Yeah. Muay Thai fighters don't do it all the time already, right? But in this fight specifically, mm-hmm. he started incorporating it more uh, going into the third round. Yeah, yeah. The first two were super close. I thought Tawan Chai edged him. Uh, he was a little bit more active. He was throwing the power kick. His left body kick is insane. Uh, but Smoke and Joe was blocking it very well. And he was returning, like you said. He Even even in the first two rounds, he wasn't letting Tawan Chai get anything free. You know, yep. Even if it was just a leg kick to match the body kick. That's what I was going to say. It was touching. a lot more just like one shot. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. then, like you said, he started getting his flurries together in the third round. He really, once you get past the kicking range of Tawan Chai, if you can get in, you you want that in the punching range, really the boxing range, because his kicks are so deadly. But if you go too close, he starts hitting you with these elbows. He's got a great answer for when you're close with the elbows. But that boxing range, Smoke and Joe thrives in that in so that range. Good, man. And you know he he kind of had to bring the dog out of Tawan Chai because the I thought rounds three and four. Smoking Joe was really starting to run 100%. away with it a little bit. Um, 
We have Blunderbub saying, I haven't seen Tao Chai wearing a fight like that in forever. Austin says, no, for real. Yeah. I second that what Blunderbub said. When's the last time Tao Chai had damage? What well, was it in the third round when he started getting that mouse underneath uh, yeah. his left eye, too? And I was like, oh, boy. Look at that. Oh, I mean, this God. is a sick fight, dude. I mean, look at that. I mean, what oh, even is this photo? Geez. It's crazy, he, like, dude. like crushed his face and then he just like popped back out after that. Yeah. I mean, just guy's tough as nails, dude. Um, I thought... The fifth round was the decider. I had it two and two going into the fifth round. Same. Um, I personally, watching it live, I need to rewatch it. Watching it live, I thought Smoke and Joe took the fifth. I did. Me too. And so did most Me of too. Bangkok, it seemed. <laughs> the crowd yeah, was that was. <laughs> but look, it, it was still a close fifth round, though. It was and very for, close. Look, I'm no judge, right? But it was yeah. an obvious first two for me for Tom Wan Chai. Obvious yeah. uh, third Three and fourth, fourth. Yeah. Smoke and Joe. That fifth round was pretty close, man. It was very close. I thought Tawan Chai did. I mean, that's a true champion to win the first two, lose yeah, the second, beat, the next two, and then shift the momentum again. It's so hard to do. Um, and some people will say he didn't do it, but I thought it was close enough that realistically, I wasn't mad either way. When they were yeah. announcing it, I was like, whoever got this is fine with me because that fifth round was so close. Um, yeah. And we have the judges' scorecards. Ah. Uh, Ricky Sewell, who's very good, uh, had it basically first two for Tawan Chai, next two for Joe, and the fifth for Tawan Chai. Um, uh, Mehdi okay. had uh, Tawan Chai winning round four. I disagree with that. Um, you know, I, I don't know about that. Um, here's the interesting though Shane Byrne, first round, 10 9 Tawan Chai. Second round, 10 10. Hmm. Hello. Because honestly, that's a 10-10 round. I thought the second round was so close. Hmm. I'm fine with the 10-10. The problem is he wow. ends up at the 48 and 40, 48-48. There are no draws in one. So then how does he get a 48-48? Or some people were some people were like, the judges don't even know what they're doing. But how about this? Maybe, and I'll probably reach out to Luke, but probably, because he wasn't judging this one, but he was judging on the card. I think when they say there's no draws in one, I think they still probably score them to a draw if it is a draw. And then once it's established that the outcome is a draw, then they decide who won. I think maybe that's what they do. Because uh, there was no knockdowns in this or anything like that. Usually, if, if there's a knockdown, it's going to go to them. Because usually, you get a draw from a 10-8 round, right? Because yeah, someone yeah. got dropped. It's rare to get a 10-8 or a, a draw with a 10-10 round. So with no knockdown... I don't know how they deliberate on that, but I would I would imagine they get to a draw and then decide rather than, oh, this fight would have been a draw. Can't have that, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I don't think this is necessarily bad. Some people are kind of dogging them and saying that their own judges don't even know their rules. How do you score at a draw? And it's like, but what if what if me and you were fighting and in the first round you dropped me? And 100% finish rate. Is a ten, yeah, <laughs> but I got back. <laughs> and it's a 10 round, right? So it's a 10 8 round, you drop me, yeah. and then I win the next two, 10 9. That's going to be scored as a draw. Yeah. But they're not going to give it a draw as the outcome. So the scorecards, I don't think necessarily mean like he doesn't know what he's doing because he scored it a draw. Like it's going to, you're going to score it a draw no matter what on the card. Yeah. The, after the fact, I think, is, is how they probably do it. But I don't know. Good call. Yeah. You should uh, reach out to Luke about that, though. Yeah. I, I will. He's a good All guy. All right. But hey, overall, fantastic main <laughs> event. Yeah, I felt bad for Tawan Chai though, huh? The post fight interview, he was like, "I have nothing to say," and they're like, "Mitch is like, uh, all right, how about this?" And he's like, "I don't have anything to say." And he was like disappointed, he like apologized to the yeah, crowd. Yeah, he was probably disappointed for his performance, yeah, dude. I felt bad. He's a champion, you know what I mean? Hurt my don't heart. Feel bad. Yeah. Probably got a bunch of fight. bot, you know. I hope. <laughs> I mean, it was a sick fight, dude. I like it. It was a really sick fight. It was. Um, we'll move on though. We yeah. had co-main events. Uh, dude, come on. Rotang, come on. Jitmanon versus Dennis Pirich. Come on, dude. And look, let's get this out of the way early. Rotang missed weight, right? The elephant in the room, yes. The elephant in the room. He missed weight. He's missed weight in the past, yes. Um, no excuses for missing weight. It sucks. None. It sucks. Um, it's a bummer. And what was it, six you know, pounds, was it? Yeah, something like that. I mean, when it's something like that, it's just like, hey, we're not going to make weight. I'm done killing my body. It's not like that's the closest he could get, probably, you know. Um, 
But he talked about, you know, he's coming off the hand surgery. He couldn't train for like three months. They book him this fight um, almost as a warm up kind of to for the Takeru fight. Hey, you had surgery. Here's this fight before you fight Takeru. That way you're not coming off a of surgery, missing weight for Takeru. You're missing weight for a kickboxing match where your belt's not even on the line type thing. You know what I mean? Um, Genevieve saying, hey, I mean, he missed uh, hydration too, so he definitely tried. That's a good point. Yeah, but a lot of times people miss hydration just because of the travel and they just weren't drinking. Especially if if you know you're not going to miss weight, you're not chugging water to make hydration. You're just like, yeah. I feel – because a lot of times fighters will say, yeah, I, feel, I felt fine and then I missed hydration. I was like, what? I felt fine. I didn't realize uh, that type of stuff. Um, Blunderbub says, I have to get this off my chest. Thai fighters can do no wrong. Miss weight. Fuck it. I don't care. You've been fighting as – since living since you were like six give me a banger and all is forgiven <laughs> true yeah he does live in thailand but I, I just mean collectively like a lot of times fighters will miss hydration like you hear i mean the rotolo brothers have failed hydration on their first attempt and then they have to come back and they're like i thought it was fine i don't even cut weight mikey doesn't cut weight he's failed hydration um it just happens you know um true and shout out chester Thanks for joining us. Don't sleep hey, on us old guys out. in Southern Canada. Watch oh, Canada. <laughs> hey, as soon as uh, this is done, I'm going to go through and watch back the uh, Canadian Grand Prix. Formula One, baby. <laughs> All right. Back All right, to the fight, though. Rod Tang, get one on. Then he missed weight. Dennis Puri says, I don't give a fuck. I want Rod Tang. I don't care what he weighs. And I Props, want, by I, the way. I want that $70,000 of, his, contra- of his, his purse that is now mine. For a little incentive. A little incentive. Yeah. I'll take it. That being said, this fight, if you haven't seen Dennis's last fight, uh, everyone knew. He wins that fight. It was a dog fight. He calls out Rod Tang. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, that would be very fun. They give it to him. And this is going to be nothing short of a banger. There's no way this fight was going to disappoint. When he missed weight, I was like, please let this fight happen because it's going to be amazing. And it was. And Rod Tang comes out. He's dancing. He's vibing. You love to see it. Yep. And then they just go to war. It was fucking incredible. Right were off the bat, how, man. Were you surprised how slippery Rotang was? He's elusive in this fight. Yes, but, but, but. And this is the thing, right? Like, look, dude. Rotang, he is, what would you say? He's their biggest draw? Yeah. Yeah. Him and Stan. So right? Probably I, Rotang. I know that there's favoritism towards Rotang. You hear it a little bit. From the mm-hmm. announcers, the announcers like, oh my god, look at the movement, dude. Purich caught him a few times. Oh yeah. Well, that left that's... that left hook landed square on the nose multiple yeah. times in that first round, literally in the middle. I think it was Mitch. I was like, oh my god, look at his head movement, crack right yeah. on the nose, and I'm like, dude, he's getting caught. Yeah, and you know, I liked, uh, you know, Rotting was a lot more elusive this fight than he has been in the past. Rotting is pretty hittable. He gets hit a lot, right? And he mm-hmm. tanks it. And that's kind of like where he got his like fame from. And yeah, he a little shimmy pull- after he gets rocked, you know? Yeah. And let's pull it up real quick because Dennis is the same way. They're cut from the same cloth, huh? Look at this. Oh, fucking, yeah. Look at the end of the first round. Look, look at, at these guys. Get, <clears throat> this is after Just, he had already gotten rocked, right? Yeah. Look at and then that and one. You could see the stumble. Oh, God. That's the one that really hurt him. And he was like, oh, wait a second. Look, look, yep. He's like, I'm oh, facing Rod Tang right now. Probably should guys, be eating him like that. But he still kept, despite being rocked, he didn't just start circling away. He wasn't running away or anything. He's still standing there throwing his shots. Uh, and then the cheap knocks him down. I mean, just, it, it was such a banger. How about in the second round when Pewdish is on his back leg and Rod Tang throws five straight body shots? Dude. Right. Left, yeah. right, left, right. Up until Peter's just right up against the cage. I'm like, oh my God, how is he and, still standing? And part of that was because of this, dude. Left hook to the body, left hook up top. Mike Tyson style. So the next time he throws a left hook to the body, Dennis is like, oh shit, here comes the left up top. No, here's a right to the body. And then another left to the body. It was just, he mixed it up so well. It was such a good fight from Rod Tank. Both of them really were there. Um, uh, yeah, and I think uh, yesterday, right? Because I joined the... I joined the uh, live stream last night. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out my mom in the chat. Oh, what's up, Colleen? Oh, I didn't. Even... Hey, shout out, Colleen. But yes, I, I joined last night and somebody said, and just like that, everybody's going to forget. Yeah. That he missed weight. Yeah. His performance was so good, right? Because they went toe to toe. 
They went to war. And Pritch, dude, look, fantastic performance from him as well. Yeah, it truly was. You know what I like? I enjoyed Pritch? it. What he started doing is he would swing that big left hook, and he was landing it a couple times, but sometimes he would swing and miss big. And you're like, dude, you cannot yes. keep doing that. So what and he that, did was – When he would do that, though, that's when Rotting would look extra elusive because yeah. he would just lean back and you'd see a giant yeah. like left. So that's what made him look extra elusive. But then, but I thought in the first like the first two minutes of the fight, I thought Rod Tang was slipping and bobbing and weaving really well and exiting on angles. And then once that that fifty second mark hit and Pure started screaming at him, he was like, "I'm Rod oh, Tang. We're going to war. You're not going to out dog me right now. <laughs> Fuck all this elusive shit. I'm about to throw down with this dude." But I really like Dennis. He would throw that left hook, and if he missed it, he could fully commit to it because he started chaining it. He could fully commit to that left hook because if it lands, you're cracking him. If it misses. You're out. You're off balance, but he would use that momentum to throw that turning sidekick the same mm. way. And I thought that was such a great addition to do mid fight because then you can keep committing to it, and you don't have to worry about really getting counter because it's hard to hit somebody while they're spinning and throwing a kick. You either have to be True. in or out and, and defend it. Um, and these guys just—I mean—they just went to war, dude. This is everything yeah. you could want. I mean, look at the the photos. By the way, I there was like fifty. And I was like, I have to limit this at a certain point. I can't put them all. I mean, and, uh, hey, by the way, just... uh, again, shout out to Juan, shout out to Cyrus, shout out to the entire team, right, for one, allowing us to show footage every once in a while, oh, yeah. uh, sharing yeah. media. It's, it's fantastic. It makes it so much better. And it makes it better for everybody that watches and listens, uh, especially those that watch, right? Um, yeah. But no, yes, Pewditch, great performance, man. Raw Tang continues being a superstar. Missed weight. Oh, well, uh, I'm with Blunderbub. Let him miss weight, right? Let it happen. Fuck I don't it. care. <laughs> Dude, just if they're gonna continue putting fights on like that, come on. The, by the way, main event for UFC or one one sixty seven. Uh, like if you're putting head to head, head to head. Yeah, I'm taking Tomlin Shai versus Smoking Joe over Imovov and Cannoneer. Right, Dude, and then Co-main? the Raw Tank versus Pudich. Dude, I would take this one over Cannoneer versus Imovov. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a hundred percent. This. Dude, Mikey, Kate, was, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll continue going, dude. I'm just sorry. I'm getting all excited because we, we're <laughs> – and the more we're getting into the United States, the more we're starting to see superstars yeah. be built, right? So 100%. we'll move on to the next one. You ready? Well, real quick too, the, the post-fight interview, I just want to give a shout-out to Frank. We all know he's the best translator in the game, but his ability to not only translate what Rod Tang's saying, but Rod Tang's emotion. Uh, emotion. Come Dude, on. it's like he was on the verge of tears. And I was like, this guy is so fucking incredible. He's so he's good. He's not just a translator. He's an interpreter. You know? And it's like, Do you remember that one when they were like, hey, and Frank, sir, you know, Chachi is giving you $50,000 yeah. to the to the translator too. And you're like, Dude, that's crazy. Amazing. But this is why, right? Because he's yeah. able to translate the emotion as well. He's so good. He's money. He's so good. Uh, Esther says the entire card was lit. I totally get your yeah. excitement, dude. It was, yeah. it was awesome. It was awesome. And then, uh, <laughs> Blunderbub, I think Blunderbub. one should have banded titles and divisions and just give us banger after banger, super fight after super fight. Blunderbub, would you almost go. say sloppy bangers or not? <laughs> yeah, you see what I did there? I brought it back, flipped it on, flipped it. Yeah, on. <laughs> all right. So, uh, hey, callback. let's go up to the next fight. Yeah, good callback. <laughs> we had Mikey Musa Machi, dude, versus Gabriel Souza. <laughs> yeah, a rematch. So yes. tapped him out uh, back in 2021. Many, many um, moons ago. Yeah, many, many moons ago. Uh, some people have been kind of uh, complaining about who Mikey has been facing uh, up until this point. He's been fa- facing a lot of like Sambo guys who are just getting leg locked by him. Uh, this is a legitimate matchup for him. Someone who's beat him in the past, a weight class up. He's bigger than him. Uh, Mikey's feeling out a little bit. Jack, he's always been shredded, but he's putting some mass on. Um, but Sosa's silver medal in ADCC. Uh, I don't remember what year, but I mean, he's legit. He's very good. And yep. Mikey tore through him. Absolutely tore through him. He's amazing, man. He's absolutely amazing. And look, the thing is, we all know Mikey I prefers fighting off his back, right? Yeah, yeah. His game off his back is absolutely and he amazing. Yeah, Sosa and, took him down. and Sosa takes him down, yeah. And <laughs> like I had seen, uh, like I was watching a video from Mikey. Uh, on Instagram, right? And they're talking about Mad Mikey and how awesome Mad Mikey is. But uh, somebody was like, he needs to work on takedown defense. And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, he probably <laughs> wanted Sosa to come in and be like, come well, on, dude, take me down. 
Well, yeah, usually, but I was kind of interested in this one because the first time Sosa took him down their their first match and he just passed guard immediately, started working off top, and really that's how he beat him. He took him down past his guard and, and worked off the top. And I was like, Mike? normally exactly and a weight class above. But I was like, Yeah, I was like, it's still interesting, right? It's compelling because you're like, does he want to be off his back immediately against the guy who beat him last time in that same position? Um, and he immediately he got taken down and he's in his, in his guard. I thought Sosa did a great job of then turning him and pushing him straight into the fence immediately because that was really good. It's a lot harder to work off your back in there. That was really good. Um, but then we're going to go through this because again, shout out one for the photography team. They have like three or four people shooting, shooting shots and they upload them all for us. And we can really go through each step of the way. Mikey starts working the K guard. You see him slip his left hand uh, under the leg of Sosa, right? Uh, to start working K guard. Then he clasps his hands to lock in K-Guard, throws his right leg up, and Sosa's like, oh, shit. He can, work off. he can work here. I'm defending now. Yep. He steps back because you see him here, heavy pressure. Look at yep. look at Mikey's chin. He's pushed up against yeah, the fence. Yeah, on the, forearm on the neck, yep. Yeah, but oh, no. He's throwing his leg up. Let me, let me step back. Now Mikey's on the leg. Mikey rolls to the leg, goes for the Mikey lock, and Sosa does the perfect thing here by putting his hand down to attack the lock of the legs, to push his legs down, get his knee yep. past the, the knee line, and then try to turn around and pull his leg out, right? And I think Beautiful at this work. point, Herb calls catch here, right? Herb does call a catch, yes. Yes. Um, so Mikey's so up. So we didn't know Mikey's up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sosa does a great job here defending, pulls through, attacks the own leg, but now Mikey switches to an overhook on the leg of Sosa. You see him now. Mm -hmm. It's tucked in his armpit. Uh then he uses this position to pull himself back, take the back, and attack the calf slicer. It was Oof. fucking beautiful, dude. So While good, Sosa's man. attacking the leg with really no submission there, he's like... Hey, he kept on going for like around. a... What was it? A toe, toe yeah, lock? Yeah, he's going for like a toe hold. And yeah, yeah, not going to happen. Um, but while he's doing that, Mikey's inching his way to take the back with that calf slicer. And he sets it up beautifully, dude. And, and Sosa's in... He's defending it for a while before he gets the tap. But eventually you see, and, and you might be thinking like, what eventually caused the tap? Because it might not have looked like anything changed. And he was in this position for a while. So why all of a sudden is he tapping to it? Once Mikey got his grip, because you see here, uh, Sosa is fighting the hands of uh, Mikey, right? And yep. here, Mikey's got his, he's, he's clasped his hands, right? Yep. He can then use that to pull Sosa's hips back into himself while he then pushes. I, can I use my cursor? Oh, look at that. I can do this now because I'm sharing the slide. Um, <laughs> he uses this knee to push on his own foot. Yep. And while he's pulling Sosa in, he's pushing forward with this knee into his own foot, which is then digging into the knee of Sosa. Deeper. Yeah, just pushing on it, pushing on it, pushing on it. And he gets the tap. And then Mikey goes off, dude. He goes off. He's cursing. He's yelling. He's like, this guy disrespected me. He disrespected my family. I call out Baby Shark. The only thing I have respect for is that he took the match. I called out Baby Shark, but he's too scared of the drug test because Jiu Jitsu World is crazy with steroids. And he's like, but he wouldn't come over because he doesn't want to get drug tested. So at least like, so let him take took the steroids. match. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'll still beat you. Dude, he oh, went off. So dude. good, dude. So good. Hey, he went by the way, Austin says, uh, I made this joke during the live, but I'm going to say it again. He reminded me of a 14-year-old who just started swearing for the first <laughs> time with his friends because it makes him feel cool. 100%, dude. So funny, dude. It, oh, man. It, even Mitch was like, oh, not sure yeah. if like, you should give the mic back or not. But the best part was they bring in Cade because Cade, Cade and Mikey are having a, a match in Denver, a jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. match, and they bring him in, and immediately Mikey's just like, nah, this guy's sick. He's like, he's like, we're the only natural ones. Well, and Ty, your brother Ty also. And we're the only natural guys in jiu-jitsu, so I have a ton of respect. And he just the change in demeanor of him going off on Sosa and the jiu-jitsu world as a whole to then Kay just walks in all chill, dude. He's like, nah, you're cool. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. So I love yeah. Mikey. Genevieve I says, love apparently Sosa, favorites. I've been talking shit for four years, and Mikey kept his mouth shut all that time. I can't blame him for going off, especially after Sosa went after his family. Yeah, but then Sosa is doubling down and saying, I never went after his family. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I talked to, I liked a, a picture of a girl on Instagram that he dated for a bit. And like that's where it all came from. I have no idea where he's why he's going all hard. And he's like, you could look for comments that I made on it. He's because Mikey was like, he's been commenting on every post I make, talking shit. And so I was like, you can go to all his posts. And I'm like, dude, I don't even care anymore. 
<laughs> let Rod Tang miss weight. <laughs> let Mikey be mad. Just, yeah. just let it be, dude. Okay, we're getting some great said, stuff out of this. He said, "I'm Darth Rigatoni. I'm a bad guy." <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but dude. Speaking he of heel, he turned heel. Yeah, what? <laughs> what? Heel hooks, dude. Oh, um, I like that. But yeah, on we can move on. One. Speaking right. of Cade, yeah, Cade Rotolo versus Blake Cooper. Cade making his MMA debut, huh? Yeah, against another guy who's um, young in his career. So it's a good. Mm-hmm. I thought it's a good first match. Good but matchup. Cooper is also Ray Cooper's brother. Ray Cooper won the the tournament in PFL, won a million dollars. Like he's. You know, he's good. He's kind of stumbled a bit lately, but Ray Cooper's a very good um, mixed martial artist. So I was like, man, Blake Cooper might not have the the MMA record, you know, a ton of a ton of his record, but he's still working with, like, top guys, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, this is going to be an interesting one for Cade. I like that they didn't just give him some random person no one's ever heard of, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you Great know, matchmaking. Because yeah, because he's such a savant on the ground that like you can't just give him some nobody. Um, so I like this, and I really, really liked what Cade was doing, like on the feet. It was cool. Yeah, did, did, did heavy kicks, keeping that distance. Yeah, and we talked about it on the fight companion. But one of the things that a lot of the um, Nurmagomedovs do, like uh, Saeed and Usman, and, like uh, Umar Nurmagomedov, all those guys are so kick heavy because they're so far away. And they're throwing kicks, and if you get through the kicks, they're just going to shoot on you, right? And mm-hmm. they can throw kicks because they're not worried about getting taken down. You think Cade yep. cares if someone takes him down? That's what he no, wants. He probably prefers it, yeah. So he's feeling free with these kicks. Let him fly. Especially dude, really... when they were clinching and on the break. Yeah. Like he was still pretty uh, close in distance, mm-hmm. right? And he still was able to sneak that right uh, high kick in. And I was like, dude, that was pretty slick. I like it. Bangkok great yeah. Cade. <laughs> One thing I do hope I do hope that he doesn't try to get too Bangkok ready. As long I'm mm. fine with all this stuff. I thought you could say uh, I do a, hope that he lets the fro out on the next one. I do, but the problem with the fro in MMA is when you get hit and your hair moves like crazy, it looks way worse for the judges. And optics, <sighs> optics matter, you know. Um, I guess, dude, he just but, looks so much cooler with it. Yeah, he does. He definitely does. But you know, I hope he's not like I did very well with the striking. I'm gonna try that every fight and be the striker until and i'll have this in my back pocket i don't like the jujitsu as a back pocket i think everything should be a means to the jujitsu everything mm. should be working to the jujitsu instead of if things get bad i'll take them down because once you start doing that and you don't get that takedown it's scary and that happens with a lot of bjj guys when they get into mma um and i really hope he doesn't do that but i thought he looked good dude i mean he looked this pretty is about good, as good man. as you can go yeah, yeah, and uh, the only thing that worried me, so on the last takedown, right, before he ended up taking mm-hmm. his back and before he ended up submitting him, was the way that he blitzed in, right? Chin straight yeah, up, scary. Yeah. boom, 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 just blitzed in. You know who that reminded me of? Who's that, Mackenzie Dern? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Because for her, when she starts running out of ideas, she blitzes like that, right? Even though the chin is up and she's like, hey, I'm going to eat one or two shots. I know it, but I'm going mm-hmm. to clinch. Hopefully I take him down. Hopefully it leads to submission, <laughs> yeah. right? That's the only thing that got me worried after watching Kate uh yeah. this morning or last night. Yeah, I think this is a I think it was a good match for him to see what works and what doesn't and hopefully they're able to isolate certain things like that and say, "Look, this this needs to be a bit better. Here's where we can improve." Obviously the jiu-jitsu's fucking you he World smokes class. everybody on the ground. He yeah. smokes everybody on the ground. Takes his back. Uh, Ghost called it out on the fight companion. Um, the the crab ride like uh, Pantoja does for the back take was beautiful. He gets the choke in, chokes him out. Uh, I mean, really couldn't have rid it, written it up any better. This is exactly yep. what you want. You got some time on the feet. You feel it out a little bit. He didn't really get hit with anything big. I don't think. I don't. I don't think I even remember seeing him getting hit in the face. Um, no, pretty clean fight. Yeah. Pretty yeah, clean I fight. It was fantastic. All right. Uh, I know we are a bit over the hour mark, so I apologize to anybody that likes the show staying within an hour. Uh, but we got two more fights to cover. Uh, yeah. Let's go in and hop into when we had Sitachai versus Nawiri. This was my most anticipated fight on the card, and it lived was up it? to it. And it was my favorite fight on the card. Oh, break it down for us. The Rod, the Rod Tang fight was amazing, obviously. But the technique in this fight, the mm. technique, it was so good. 
because going into this, Masaki is fucking awesome. If people haven't seen him, they might not be impressed with him necessarily after this and might think, like, what was the big deal? But multiple-time champion in K1, fighting over in Crush in K1 in Japan, the guy is an offensive nightmare, a complete nightmare. He's a vicious striker. Uh, I think Jack Slack was talking about it. He's like one of those guys like Anderson Silva who has a finish with like every weapon. He's got left elbow knockouts, right elbow knockouts, left hand knockouts, right hand knockouts, left high kick, right high kick. Like he has a knockout with every weapon. He's a fucking killer. But Sidichai is fucking a defensive god. He's mm. His defense is so good. So I was like, will his defense and his nullifying game be be enough to overcome such an offensive force like no- Noidi is. So, so let me ask you this with Noidi, uh, because you know, this is my first time watching Noidi. Yeah. It's his debut on one, right? Um, but I did notice that it was a lot of single shots for Noidi. So is that more due to City Chai's defense versus Noidi's yeah. fighting style? Got yeah, it. I'll send you some stuff from K1, dude. The guy is incredible. But City Chai is just so good at nullifying you and freezing you. And not allowing you to get off, you know, like immediately he's on his back foot, right? Sidichai fought most of this fight with his back against the fence. And I think one thing to consider too is we should probably start going through the pictures. We're getting too hyped. Um, one thing that was probably tough for Masaki was that this wasn't in a ring. There's no corners. It's in a circle. Mm. Uh, most of this fight would have been spent in the corner if it was in a traditional ring like Masaki's used to. Um, but I don't necessarily, I'm not saying that's why he lost or anything like that, but it is something that's interesting to me. I'm yeah. wondering if he struggled a little bit with that. Um, but you can see, I mean, I'm sure it's an adjustment. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, but you could see defensively, at least for the kicks, very good. But one thing that Masaki has always kind of done is when people start throwing combinations on him, he shells up like this. He shells up, mm-hmm. he'll take it, and then he'll go. And Sidichai was just never letting him go. He was either forcing him to cover up with multiple combinations, starting with the body and working his way up top to end the combination, or yep. uh, as soon as Masaki would step in, he hits him with that teep, pushes him yep. back. Yeah, perfect. Pushes him back and then throws like the left high kick as he's coming in. He resets. Yeah, that was really nice work. I mean, just, oh, he's too close. I can't kick him. Let me hit him with the teep, push him far out. And as soon as he takes a step Put forward, back he's in my like, kicking range. Bam, kick him. And then he gets in close. I'll work the body shots to have him shell up. He starts landing that uppercut. He goes uppercut Very to, cerebral, to straight. Yeah, the uppercut was Oh, beautiful. that's that one, too, that landed where uh, yeah. Noidi just, like, looked at him. He, like, he nodded. He's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, you got, you me. got me there. Yeah. Uh, second round, Masaki hits him with the high kick that hits him in the eye, blind, in that eye for the rest of the fight. Uh, early in Bro. the second round, Sidichai's fighting with one eye. And you can see at the end of the second round, Masaki really started to land. Their open stance... He starts landing the, his rear hand. He's opening with that rather than the jab. He starts landing on Sidichai, and I'm like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that's not the moment. Because, look, I like Masaki, but I was rooting for Sidichai. That's the boy. Um, <laughs> I like his gym, it's on Penang. But Masaki, I thought, won the third round. I thought he looked really good in that third round. And I, the whole time I was like, Sidichai is really starting to have to work his craft here to, to, to make it through this round. He started like, I mean, if Masaki just started hitting him. That he hit him with that piston of it, right? Uh, the rear hand. And um, I was worried. But Sidichai just did a great job of clinching where he needed to, uh, exiting on angles, uh, making him shell up, and then exiting on the angle so that a lot of that time spent. Yes, Masaki started landing his shots, but he had to spend a lot more time getting to the point where he could land a shot in that third round because Sidichai's ring craft or cage craft or whatever was so good. Yeah. that he never really got enough time to start implementing his game despite starting to land on him. And the fact that he did it all with one eye in that third round is fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. so impressed with this. I love this fight. It was so fun. It was a solid it fight, man. Uh, again, adding on to uh, just the fights that when you compare to the other fights that happened from the other organization yeah. last night, just talent after not talent, right? Yeah, Anonymous. Uh, right, shout anonymous is, uh, because... Uh, Kickboxing fans had me think Masaki was going to annihilate Sidichai. I thought Sidichai was going to win, um, but if you haven't seen Masaki in K1, the people who thought he was going to annihilate, I'm not, I'm not going to knock them because he 
annihilates people. <laughs> he's fucking good. It's just Sinichai's defense is incredible. He yeah, really and Austin is good. says uh, it'll be cool to see Noidi again, though. He's been uh, he's gonna have some great matchups. Oh yeah, that weight class in one is okay. stacked. Give me Masaki versus. Uh, they're probably gonna give him a title shot, but Masaki versus. Uh, if we can get Menchikov to fight in kickboxing, it would be sick. But I think he's gonna get a title <laughs> fight against. Um, well, I don't know. Aristotle's probably gonna have the rematch. I don't know what happens, but. All right, last yeah. one, last fight. Uh, this is the last one we're gonna cover. Yeah. All right, we had uh, Adrian Lee versus Antonio Mamarella. Look, everyone sees the name. Everyone's like, oh, shit. Adrian Lee, he's 18 years old. The brother of Christian, Angela, and Victoria Lee. Um, the first to fight since Angela's retirement. The first to fight since Victoria's passing. Going into this, a lot of people were like, why is one giving him a fight at 18 as the prodigy of the family when some of that pressure is rumored to be something that really weighed heavy on Victoria, right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to dance. I don't want to be disrespectful or anything, but, um, and I understand where that line of thinking is from the outside. It, it looks like it could be like, Hey, why are we doing this again? Why are we putting all this pressure on a young phenom from this family like this? Who just went through all this, um, drama. But if Adrian wants it and he's about it and he doesn't care about the press, like they're different people. You know, the other siblings, they're different people. Maybe he want, Maybe he's like, this is the way I'm going to get through this. I need to fucking smash some dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm fine with it. I don't think they were, he was coerced. I don't think he was forced. If he wants it, he wants it. And they, if, you know, they, it's presented. Uh, Christian's, you know, still a champ. Angela's retired. Adrian's that new wave. And God damn, see that new wave, dude. He looked phenomenal. Dude, instant Wallace. pressure from Lee. Yeah, uh, immediately. Take down. Out. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I loved is during the clinch, he was active the entire time. Yeah. Landing damage. Dude, the knees. Dude, knees to down opponent. Come on. I know we've talked about it before, but it, it, it just showed how it creates extra urgency for the person on the bottom. Right? Yeah. All it took it was one knee. Mamorello wasn't out. He wasn't severely yeah, damaged, but he did say, like, I can't sit here. Exactly. That's what it is. It's not like, oh, knees to the head are going to kill somebody. No, they're fine after getting kneed in the head. Sometimes it's a knockout and they're not stoked about eating a knee, but it forces a transition. It forces a scramble, all that type of stuff. I thought, I thought Adrian Lee, I thought every single position of this fight, he was winning and he was composed. He never got over, he never overextended himself. Mm. He was mixing in knees when it made sense where he wasn't going to lose control because sometimes you you disengage so you can land a knee on the ground um, yeah. and then you end up losing the position, but at least you got a knee off. He was able to land a couple knees and then still maintain position and then yep. go back. Like once he got the control, he go back to a knee. All the, I mean, he just every position of this fight, he looked like he was fucking, he, it was a masterclass. It really was. He's 18 years it old. Was. He put on a masterclass in his one debut. That's crazy. It was good. It was good. Uh, there was a point where he went inverted triangle. Um, here's the inverted triangle. And then he attacks the free arm, the right arm of Mamarella, and goes for like a Kimura at the end of the round. So it's like, dude, I'm already in a reverse triangle. Why are you trying to Kimura me? Dude, that's brutal. So yeah, close, by so, the way. Yeah. It was so creative. The only thing is he wasn't able to push it. It was it was too open. You want that hand to be across their back almost. Yeah. You're not going to get it across their back, but that's what you Run should be like pushing it into. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's tough to do in that position to get up against the fence and all that stuff. But I thought it was so creative and cool. Um, yep. And then the bell rang. And then he just continues to work. And then he gets uh, the second round rear naked choke. Um, looked absolutely ecstatic to get this one done and get the finish. And just, I mean, he just put on, he gets the bonus. He put on such a fantastic performance. It was so good. 18 years old. Yeah, and look, we've had we, look. We talked about Raul Rosas, right? Raul Rosas is very good at what he does, but he's nowhere near this complete. No, he's one of these uh, new age uh, phenoms that has been yeah. training mixed martial arts from a young age. Not yeah. focused on jujitsu, not focused on wrestling. Straight mixed martial arts from a young age. So this is why, like, you have the Cade Rotolos of the world again. No disrespect mm -hmm. to Cade, 
We know that he's a jujitsu practitioner. He's phenomenal, right? Yeah. But when you put him up against people like this, for example, that have been training mixed yeah. martial arts their entire life, it's going to be a, a rough go when we get to that point. It's, it's different, right? Yeah. And yeah. one thing that one thing to think about that I think was really highlighted is not only was Adrian training mixed martial arts since he was a kid, he's training mixed martial arts with a focus on getting into one specifically and working with their rule set. Whereas other fighters True. get signed to one and they have to adapt. I can throw knees on the ground now. That's awesome. Adrian Lee's been setting up knees on the ground since he was a kid. It's like God, he knows the rule set. Dude. It's it's I, And I think that does make a difference. Future um, star, huh? Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. No pressure. Yeah. Very good. Rough. All right. Very good. What else do we have? That was the last fight we we're going to cover from uh, 1167. Yeah, that's the last fight we'll cover. Um, bonuses. Uh, Adrian Lee got a bonus. Uh, Cade Rotolo got a bonus again. Mikey got a bonus again. Uh, good decisions, I thought. I thought How many times does bonus. Mikey fight a year? I mean, with Jiu-Jitsu, dude, you could go all day. You could just keep going. I feel like he fights, what, four or five times a year? Every single time he gets a bonus? Yeah. What's sick about this is this graphic is the guy in the middle and the guy on the right are matched up with each other already. They're already oh, facing that's each other. Sick. Yeah. That's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's going to be good. Um, Anonymous says uh, Souza des- uh, deserved a bonus. I thought so too. We didn't talk about the fight because uh, we're already an hour and a half in, but um, your girl, Tsuki Hirata, in a must win fight, gets choked out cold at the guillotine in like 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah, that probably deserves a bonus too. Sleeping Hirata in the first deserved a bonus. Yeah, agree. yeah, agree for sure. <laughs> Thank you.